The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 30th November, 2020. Shadows. Me. Today there was an eclipse of the moon, and you know how I get. I am. Lunatic. Me. Yes. I remember that since I went to school, we used to make a calendar with my mother marking some of the eclipses, knowing that those days I should do nothing but rest. They made me very bad. I was weird, autistic, exhausted, with tachycardia, mobilized. I have learned to manage it, but resting is the best, letting the energy simply go through me, be absorbed, processed, sleep. It is hard for me to open my eyes and stay on my feet. I am. You have always lived very connected and aligned to these phenomena, so it is important to respect them. Me. Yes. An eclipse of the moon reveals the shadow of the earth on our natural satellite, and it is what allows us to see ourselves projected as a whole outside. Therefore, beyond the fact that each individual is affected differently, it is inevitable to recognize that an eclipse refers to everyone not only humans, but all living beings, the earth itself. And specifically, an eclipse speaks of the closure and opening of dark processes of the soul, from the last six months, counting from the moment the shadow begins to project. What was I doing on May 30th? Ah, yes, in quarantine, locked up in France, accepting that the Yo Soy Way could not be carried out as planned, and that it should remain still in the same place for a year. I am. Quite a trauma, right? Me. Yes, really. Exactly six months ago, my world turned upside down, as I suppose most in relation to this virus and the planetary quarantine. But of course, since 2015, that, having received the indications of everything I should do, I waited for this August 2020 as the moment to launch myself to the planet to connect the world— 32 equidistant places in the global sphere surrounding the world, in addition to the North and South Poles, a journey that would take a year and a half, and that at the end of May entered Gemini, like the lunar eclipse today, was completely frustrated. If I couldn't travel to the 32 sites of the network and to the poles, then I had to go to a place from which I could connect to all those sites from within. I am. Egypt. The Great Pyramid. Me representing the earth and its inner chamber, the nucleus of expansion. That week I had to start rethinking everything. My journey, my path, would no longer be outward, but inward. It would no longer be with nature day by day, but with humans day by day in connection. I should do the opposite of what I was used to. Sit still, run a routine, and talk to people every day. The frustration of such an idea and expectation plunged me into a horrible shadow of depression that week, into a lack of understanding, into a hopelessness, meaningless, I felt used by the universe, having made myself go through so many things, for what purpose? I felt like I wasted a lot of time. But as the days passed, I realized that everything I had experienced had prepared me to be able to do this in the best way free from all past sorrows, being myself, being present in balance in me, without judgment, neutral. Then, after feeling stripped of everything I waited for so long, I re-signified my outer path and turned it into my inner path. I am. And now you can understand what's happening to your aching body this week. It is letting out the shadows of tension and frustration. Your mind accepted it in an instant, your soul needed about two months to process it, and your body is reacting now, six months later. Me. Clearly, it's as if the shock wave of that conflict has reached me now, facing the reality that you only try to deny and reject. I don't want to go to the pyramid. I don't want to be in Egypt. All those ideas that my mind perceived six months ago one day until it found meaning. All those emotions that my soul felt for two months, feeling hopelessness, frustration, sadness, now began to be manifested in the body, as always, more slowly. It really is as if I am in the shadows, and my spirit, no matter how much he tries to tell me that everything is fine and that there is much more, my body just wants to lie on the bed and pity itself, becoming the victim, tucked into his cave. I am. 
Once upon a time, on an island in the Aegean Sea, there was a deep cave where a small group of people lived. They were slaves, and not only were they forbidden to leave the cave, but they were also bound hand and foot. High rocks, acting as a wall, prevented people from seeing what was beyond. They lived in the shadows. But every once in a while, a flickering light came on, and on the rocky walls of the cavern they saw shadows cast in motion. The slaves believed that all that existed in the world was that cave, those shadows, and the flickering dim light. However, behind the wall was where the magic happened. There, other people were in charge every day of lighting a fire that emitted that light, and in front of the fire they placed figures of animals, people, and objects, moving them like puppets. This cast the shadows on the rocks that clouded the slaves. Then one day, one of the slaves managed to untie himself and freed himself. He went through the wall and saw the puppets and the fire. He understood that what he had seen all his life raised there had been only the shadow of truth. But he didn't stop there, and he was emboldened to get out of the cave. When he reached the end of the tunnel, he saw the bright light of day, something he had never seen, and damaged his eyesight, preventing him from seeing the world. For a long time he refused to see, covering himself, looking for shadows, dark places, to feel safe in the known to which he was accustomed. He could only see and understand shadows, so he began to follow them, looking at the ground, until he began to dare to see the objects from which the shadow was cast. He saw nature, plants, animals, people, and understood that puppets were not the truth, they were just a game a simulation of this true world. But it would take him even longer to understand where the light of truth that allowed him to see everything came from. In the evening he dared to see the stars, then the moon, and one day he was ready to look at the sun. When he discovered the whole world, he decided to return to the cave to help his enslaved brothers and free them so they could see the truth. As he entered the tunnel, he realized that his vision failed, and he could not see things clearly, because he had become accustomed to the light, and returning to the shadows was very difficult for him. When he found the others, he told them what he had discovered, but the other slaves saw how useless he had become, tripping over the stones, not seeing the wall or them well, being quite clumsy. The other slaves believed that he had gone mad and could not be like them. They began to fear him, to call him crazy, to push him away, and even to think of murdering him if his crazy ideas threatened the comfort of their lives. Thus the freed slave returns to the outside, frustrated to see that it was impossible to convince others of what the truth was, that they lived in the shadows, and the shadows are not real. It is only the absence of light, absence of consciousness. Me, the myth of the cave of Socrates and Plato, I am. This myth, this story, tells life itself, between lights and shadows. All life and existence is a play of light and shadow. It becomes a problem when you take such a game very seriously. The first particles that will generate energy will project light. The light particles will pass through all the empty spaces, but will bounce off when they encounter other particles in their path. This causes more particles to form atoms, and more atoms to generate molecules, and these in turn chemical compounds, chemical elements, matter, objects. It will be much more difficult for photons to pass through bodies, bouncing off the surface of all the thousands of particles, which prevents light from passing through from the other side. This generates a vacuum of light, which we call shadows. In mythological stories, light and shadow are enemies, but in reality, shadow is not a real or opposing force, but it is simply light without being able to be projected. Absence of light. The opposite of light would be matter, which prevents its passage by compressing more and more. But matter is nothing but distorted light. That is why in the story, it is the very light that decides to transform itself and create the darkness of density that will allow the existence of the shadow. In Latin, to carry the light is said lux ferro, which gave rise to the name light-bearer Lucifer. Me. 
The one who considers himself culturally as an enemy of the light is precisely the one who possesses the light. I am. More paradoxes. The story of Lucifer is best explained from another not-so-mythological point of view. When conscious light expands, it is able to manifest realities through energy. The energy then, in its positive and negative, begins to agglomerate the waves in the form of particles, and these in atoms that will give rise to the matter that you perceive with your senses. The same light bends in time and space to be able to live their ideas, feel their thoughts, experience their expressions. The distortion of light becomes the very mechanism of creation, but at the same time, a kind of trap for divine consciousness, as it begins to weave a labyrinthine framework from which it is very difficult to escape. Thus, one becomes a prisoner, a slave of one's own creation, being able only to perceive the distortions. Me, like the slaves of the cave, I am. That's when people begin to live deceived by their own psyche, their own soul and energy, from the subconscious and the unconscious, weaving an infinite and chaotic network without meaning, without escape. That's the world of shadows. The very life you live based on beliefs, sensations, perspectives, and perceptions. You believe everything your senses tell you. You believe everything others tell you. You turn it into your truth, and you can only see the world with those eyes clouded by distortion and shadows. It is the subconscious that lights the fire every day, hidden behind the wall, bringing out patterns. It is the unconscious that, without any idea of things, lets itself be carried away by the shadows and lives its life according to them. For in every step you take, your shadow is the only thing you have contact with. Me. Unless you're Peter Pan and you look in your shadow. I am. Peter Pan was not from this physical world. So he had no shadow, and he wanted to feel, to live. So he sought his shadow. Me. So our feet, at every step, keep us living in the world of shadows. We design our lives according to them, projected on the ground, on our paths, purposes, destinies. I am. They obscure the clarity of being every day, until one day the shadows themselves show you the truth. It is not the shadow that allows you to see or identify something, but the light that surrounds them. Then you start looking for the light. E. Sure, it makes sense. People who are fixed in a pattern of belief are anchored in the form, in the shadow, the object. It is like someone who looks at the sky observing the stars without realizing that you can only see their brightness thanks to the darkness that surrounds them, to space. I am. When you understand the contrast of things, you begin to understand that what you have always seen is nothing more than a mere projection. Thus, the slave, trapped in his own strings from the fabric of his psyche, begins to detach. And how does he do it? Just like Ariadne in the Minotaur's labyrinth, unwinding the golden thread as you enter, you can then roll it up again to find the way out, going to the questions, where am I? Where do I come from? Who is my family? Who do I relate to? What was my history? All the existential questions of clan, family, culture. He searches for the origins, begins to unravel the mysteries of the fabric that kept him imprisoned, bringing clarity. Thus he discovers the fire of the subconscious and the patterns used as puppets that are repeated again and again day by day. Me. And there he decides to go out to the real world to the perfect world of ideas where he finds divinity, the reality of the soul. I am. Although it is difficult for him to adapt, you must follow many paths to achieve this, looking first at the shadows, hiding in them so as not to damage your sight and consciousness. Thus he follows in the footsteps of religions, studies, philosophies, spirituality, science, dogmas of enlightenment, shadows in the world of ideas, and then leaves the gloomy theory to meet experience. Me, like one who studies botany and never saw a tree. One day, when I see him, all his knowledge will make sense. I am. 
That's how he discovers reality in awe. And one day, you will see the sun, the truth. You will discover everything. Me. And he will tell the others again. I am. And they'll think it's crazy. Me. Why? I am. Because the path of consciousness, coming out of the shadows into the light, is a personal path, never a collective one. It is up to each slave to unravel his own threads in the labyrinth of the subconscious. A slave without the will to be free, if he is taken to freedom by force, will only become blind to the light, afraid of what he saw, and will run to the safety of the shadows, denying the light forever. Me. Of course, that's why you can't make humanity aware in a magical, forced way, but with love, patience, and education. I am. The slaves of the shadows will be willing to destroy you for defending the integrity of their perceptions. For the light has only to damage his eyes, accustomed to darkness, and then they must blame someone for their inability to see. Me. To Lucifer. To the devil. I am. To which they will dress in all the ways you can think of, as it suits them, so as not to lose their vision of security. Me. I remember when I was a kid, I was about 12 years old, some Jehovah's Witnesses knocked on the door and started talking to me about things that I had recently remembered. I saw that they knew what they were talking about and would understand me, so I made them go home. I showed them my drawings, my notes, which also spoke of this apocalypse. But instead of sharing, they stared at me and said, This is the work of the devil. Why? I asked them, disappointed by their reaction. I was told that only the devil is capable of showing such things. To which I replied, But if what I say is the same as what your prophets say, and I was told that the prophets no longer exist, there were only those who are in the book, and everything else is the work of the devil. I kicked them out of my house, of course, telling a child that the devil was talking to him about things they themselves talk about seemed too hypocritical and unpedagogical and unconditional on their part. I am. Well, they just defend their position and mission, and they can't see more than that. In history, religions made sure that no one else can change things by saying that after what is written in the holy books, no one else could talk to God, and therefore everyone else is from the devil. Me. I've been told many times that what I do is diabolical. I am. It's a political strategy that keeps working, that makes people doubt any innovation or enlightening idea or difference, embedding the idea that something is real when it's not. Me. Like when they say we are democracies, when we aren't. I am. That's a topic for another post. Me. So the myth of the cave is valid at all levels of our lives. We live in a world of shadows, and eclipses remind us of this whenever they can. I am. That is why they are key moments to recognize the shadows that constitute us from the subconscious. Time to ask the key questions. What I see, think, believe, do, and feel. Is it the truth? Perhaps they are just shadows of the past that continue to be reflected in our lives, to which we have become so accustomed that we fear denying as distortions and cling to them as absolute truths. Me. It's like yesterday when we talk about abortion. They are difficult issues, but you usually see very quickly how we are all conditioned by what we believe or see according to our own history and upbringing or experience. It is difficult to be neutral in a dual world, which considers neutrality a lazy thought, which does not get wet in sensitive issues by not taking a stand. I am. The road to neutral unconditionality is long, and you must practice it if you are looking for consistency, understanding that all positions are truths and none is above the other. In a world of shadows, lights are mere guides. Me. Like a starry sky. I am. That in the shadows you find points of reference. Me. Although we know well that the stars are not the truth, but a tiny manifestation of it, which is invisible to the eyes. I am.
That's why you should make peace with the shadows instead of wanting to eliminate them. For the shadows have formed you. They have made you what you are. They have traced your history, your paths, your destinations, objectives, purposes, and missions. Every emotion, relationship, and action. Belonging, attachment, and feeling. Everything you know arises from the shadows. And you will only see the light when you become aware that just as the shadows you see projected on the ground are only visible by the light around them, the only reason you can see the sun, moon, and stars is because of the darkness that surrounds them. Me. The world of shadows in which we live is visible thanks to the light of the divine and heavenly. I am. Just as the celestial and divine world is only visible because of the shadow world in which we live. Me. I honor all my shadows. I am. And only in this way will you find your way out of the labyrinth into the light of truth.